Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple not only showed off iOS 12, but they showed off Mac OS as well. And this is the latest version. This is Mac OS Mojave. And one of the things you might notice is that it's got a dark mode already applied. And it's not just the bar at the top here or the dock, it's everything. So if we go into system preferences, go to general, you'll see we can switch between the two back and forth. And the background or the wallpaper changes based on which theme you've got and adapts to day and nighttime. So it's one of those new things they've added under screensaver. And it actually shows you here that we have a dynamic wallpaper. So hopefully we'll have more of these later, but you can pick this one or this one if you'd prefer, but now it's dynamic. Now, one of the next things they showed off is that not only does it have a dark mode, it has a new thing called stacks. And you'll see here's a bunch of images. If I click on them, they expand out. And this is a new way to organize your desktop. So if you go to view, use stacks, if I turn that off, they all come back. But if I use stacks, it auto sorts them based on the type of the type of file they are, such as images, files, documents, whatever it might be, it auto sorts. Now they've updated the finder. It's pretty nice. Let's open that up. Finder is open and I have similar files that I have over here. These are just images for videos that I've made. And we have a new view here and it's very familiar. It looks just like CoverFlow, only a modern version of it. But the nice thing is on the sidebar, we have metadata. And you can see this is the size. We've got what type of camera it was used or taken with a GH5, the type of lens, and what app we use to edit it with to make this photo. So that's what I used, and you can do that for any one of these. So I go through many different revisions of, of thumbnails when I'm creating them, and these are just some of them, and this shows you what I took it with. This is a Sony camera and with an E55 or 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, and it's an old photo, but it shows us information about all of that. So that's built in to Finder now and something I really appreciate. Now, one of the other things they've done is with preview. So if I click on here, hit the space bar and it opens preview, you'll see this is another one I edited at some point. Now we can mark it up right in preview. And we have all of our different tools right here to mark this up and do whatever we need to do with it. So if we wanted to add some text, we can add text, we can draw on it, whatever you want to do, we can do. And then if you don't want to save it, just cancel it. We can rotate it from here, even without fully opening the application to edit it or anything like that. So it's really nice and pretty simple and straightforward. Now, if I go into notes, there's a new continuity feature that I really like. Now I'm in notes and this is a new feature. If you control click or right click, you now have take photo or scan documents. So if I click on take photo, it opens up the photo app on my iPhone. I'll snap a photo from my phone right now, hit use photo on the phone, and it just shows up over here. That's what I just snapped of this desktop right now. As I'm recording this, that's what's showing. So that's a nice little simple feature that they've added in and something that just makes life a little bit simpler. Let me close that. Now we have some new apps they've added as well. You might notice one here, that's the new home app. We have it on iPhone and iPad. Now we have it on the Mac and we can set up our home or rooms or whatever. And it syncs over iCloud. We also have a news app that they've updated. So we'll go to technology and this is all of our different technology feeds. It updates and then we can scroll through whatever we'd like. And it's pretty simple and straightforward like you'd expect. We also have a new stocks app and they've brought this over from iOS to the Mac. We have voice recorder or voice memo. All of these apps are new, including home, and they've been brought over from the iPhone. And a lot of people were asking, and they even said this in the keynote, is will Mac OS and iOS converge or merge into one OS? And they said no, and not just no, a resounding no. But they have said that they've been working on this technology for years to bring over iOS apps into Mac so that we can use different apps that might be helpful. Now, aside from those apps that they've added, they've redone the App Store. The app is very familiar and very similar to the iOS app. You'll see we have top paid here, top free apps. We can create, work, play, develop. We've also got categories. And of course we've got our updates. So it's pretty simple and straightforward, but it's a much needed redesign and hopefully it helps developers make some more money or get noticed a little bit better 
as opposed to the current view or current model. And they also are bringing new apps. They're bringing Microsoft Office 365 and Adobe into here, some Adobe Lightroom apps, and BB Edit is coming back. So that'll be really nice to see those brought back into the App Store. Apple has updated Safari with some privacy and security to really stop sites from tracking you. And while I don't do that on my website, there are many sites that do that that track you to figure out who you are and fingerprint you by basically knowing what font you're using, all sorts of information from your computer, and Apple's stopping that. It's not allowing it to see what ads you have from one, one page to the next or any information like that. So it should help with, with security and privacy. And aside from just that, they're locking down all sorts of things such as the camera and the microphone and mail and messages, and they're all protected by default so that different rogue applications can't gain access to them. So that's really nice and it's built in. One update they push now is APFS now supports fusion drives and hard drives. That wasn't available except for solid state drives. So that's been changed as well. There's a lot of other things such as faster core ML, better support for external GPUs and other things such as a create ML tool to train vision and natural language models for your app. So all sorts of really neat things are built in and different apps get the dark theme and everything's looking pretty good overall. One thing I've been really looking forward to is that FaceTime is getting group FaceTime. So you can connect to up to 32 different people on iPhones, iPads, or your Mac and view them all at once just like you can on all of those other devices. So that's a great addition, something I've been looking forward to and missing since we lost iChat. So that's it for Mac OS Mojave. Uh, if I find anything else, I'll be sure to let you know, but those are the major changes. Let me know what you think about them though in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.